Hi guys, School here. Welcome to part four of the Inside SCS software videos. I hope you've enjoyed the series so far. This is the final part. This is the interview with Pavel Sabor. Now in this video, I literally just recorded the audio dialogue between myself and him. So what I've done is I've made a video with me taking a journey in Eurotruck and I've dropped the audio on top. Now the acoustics of the room that myself and Pavel were in were not fantastic. There was a computer in there and it was kind of echoey. So I apologize for the sound quality, but hopefully you can hear everything he has to say. And I did ask him some interesting questions, which I think you will be interested in the answers to. Anyway, give me a thumbs up if you like the whole thing and uh, I'll see you on the next video. So what, I mean, while we're talking about World of Trucks, I'm probably going to jump ahead very slightly, but it seems to fit in. What, what kind of future, what, what do you see World of Trucks doing in the future? I mean, where do you see it all heading in a very general sense? Why, why, do, pe why do you want people to log on? Why should they log on? What can they do when they're in there? Obvious thing is mm -hmm. virtual trucking companies and that yeah. kind of thing, but where do you see it all going? Well, World of Trucks is supposed to be everything <laughs> that people are dreaming of, but, you know, it will take time. Uh, we would love to eventually get to VTC uh, universe system inside of World of Trucks portal where people could form companies, uh, make sense out of like deeper interaction with the economy of the, of the whole system. Uh, so this is not just community portal for exchanging screenshots. This was just a slow start. It should be way more for real communities for VTCs. Eventually, it should be our uh, gateway towards real multiplayer with uh, kind of MMO kind of approach to having people having people's profiles persistent across across time. So. People can join into sessions and then leave the sessions without having to restart. They have profiles with hours and hours invested into them, so they need to share the experience for a while and then go there each separate way, but still continue playing the same game, the same uh, continue their campaign. So, so there is a lot of things on our wish list for World of Trucks. We are just starting quite slowly. That's that's their experience of the past year and now with the Christmas event it's like the first ray of, of the future that we are able to do more than just uh, sort of Facebook for screenshots of Eurotrack Simulator 2 as people are accusing us of doing with this portal so far. Mm. Awesome. So quite big plans but obviously I mean you've, you've shown me around and I've seen so many things that your guys are working on what would you say is the focus at the moment of the big thing that you want to achieve? Is it the Scandinavian mod? Uh, I yeah yeah Scandinavia DLC is the focus of part of the company and it's a total priority for them, but it doesn't affect the American truck simulator team or it doesn't affect the core technology group is having their own set of goals for the near future, or the World of Trucks guys are also pursuing their own priorities. So it's not like the companies jumping from one priority to another and all 50 people are pursuing this one priority. It's always multiple uh, things that are cooking mm. and whichever is finished first comes out to <laughs> for the public consumption. So Scandinavia, um, obviously people have seen pictures on the blog. Um, you've shown me some footage today, it looks fantastic. Um, we all want to play it. When when do we think we'll be able to play it? Uh, I'm trying to avoid making explicit <laughs> commitments to particular dates. Uh, of course, everybody, including us, would love to see it out already or way sooner than things are happening as this time goes by. Uh, we are now about to finish the work on the on the map itself, on the on the content for for. Uh, the game it should be finished towards the end of the year and then we enter the testing tuning tweaking balancing period which may take a few weeks but experience is teaching us that it will take longer it may take a few months but the hope is now that uh, later this winter or very early this spring it should be out but 
people know us. When it's done, people have <laughs> have quality first. Uh, quality first. So, so we are putting a lot of effort into. We are trying to do whatever we can to speed it up. But uh, things, some things just need the time yeah. to be finished properly. Awesome. Um, the big thing that I saw today, which I, I really was interested to see, was American Truck Simulator, and uh, I think. Visually, it looks fantastic. Um, it's hard to gauge how far that might be away from completion. Um, are you? I mean, what's the kind of release plan? Obviously, you don't have a release date, but what's a release plan? Is it? Does it go into some kind of closed beta, open beta, early access, or is it straight into release? Do you have any kind of idea on that? Well, we have an idea, and a week ago we had a different one. Maybe it's, it's <laughs> evolving always. Uh, for sure, we are not going to release the full continent type of American Truck Simulator. The ultimate vision, of course, is to cover the whole continent. Uh, we, whatever we do, it will be a small sample of the future continent vision. With the, with the density of, of the cities and road network we have chosen, there are a hundred many years to invest into the map itself, just the map of the future future American truck simulator. So we are inevitably releasing with, whether we call it early access, whether we call it beta, whether we call it starter kit or starter pack, we are going to release a part of the future com complete game and ask people to have patience with us as we release more through time. It will be a series of either paid for or in some cases free DLCs to eventually expand the world, but it's going to take some years to do, that's, that's for sure. So I mean, initially it will come out with California? California will be the minimum to release with. Yeah. We think there are some neighbor states are already uh, being, being worked on. We hope that we will be able to give people a bit more immediately after release through free updates. So. Uh, we need enough hours of exploration time for people to, mm. to get hooked, to find enough places to visit, to get their money's worth. So initially it will be just west coast mm. and we'll work our, our way through the, through the continent towards the east coast. So that's going to take a while, isn't it? Because I mean America is huge and that's just it's North America. Yeah, it's um, absolutely huge. It's, uh, we, we need to find a way to uh, scale up the team and be able to ramp up more people working on it. We, we started the American truck internally as a, as a like a second smaller project next to European Truck Simulator, hoping that uh, we can like uh, uh, what's the term uh, show shoestring or what's that say? bootstrap it from. All right. Uh, from a very small team, get some sales in, and then grow the team to make it into like a well-oiled factory plant where where content is being uh, created more quicker. So once we release the game and get the initial reaction from the players, we will know whether we can afford or we can dare mm. to really grow the team. In ideal case, seeing how much work there is ahead of us. There should be 20 or more people working on American truck, not just five, six people as mm. there is now. So so we need to find a way to, to ramp up. At the same time, uh, we, we never quite dared because we never, we didn't want the burn rate to be a burden for the company. So we are still in this mode of, let's keep it small, let's make it nice. Let's start with like cohesive, nice experience that's a, that's a slice of the future uh, future world but it's it's it works well as, as one nice sample and then see from there where we can go yeah I mean, I'd, yeah people I don't think people would reasonably expect you to release all of North America in one go I think you know California itself as a state is quite a big state so people are you know obviously if we can get the game quicker <laughs> with a with a one state to play in as a minimum that would be fantastic you know and then people will obviously start asking for more straight away but 
um, patience and all the rest of it. And like you say, if it does well, then obviously you could look at building a bigger team and building more states out more quickly, I guess. Um, coach Simulator. Is that, well, is that still in progress? Is that still on the cards? Because it, it had a bit of an uncertain future at one point. Uh, well, this, this concept has been going through some real, real ups and downs in, in what we were thinking about it. Uh, we have requests from our fan community to do, to cover buses or coaches all the time. And we knew this is an opportunity, opportunity that we shouldn't miss. So the question was, how do we satisfy this, this need? At one point, initially we said, okay, let's make a very quick DLC. Let's find a way to squeeze in a bus or two somewhere, coach somewhere wrong, along into the Euro Truck 2 universe. But then we felt, well, maybe, you know, it's not enough. Maybe we should go for a more ambitious goal. So for a few months, we were working on it with the concept of having a, or actually a, a new game that would have rather completely separate data and everything. And we even envisioned, envisioned it as having a, a multiplayer component or a persistency component. And once we started charting this design document, we realized, we realized, you know, this is pretty much matching what our vision for World of Trucks is. So maybe World of Trucks can handle the special cases of both, both trucks and, and coach buses and maybe more. So we, we, again, scaled back the ambition from uh, creating a separate game out of this and instead concentrated back on the, the, on the, on the idea that the buses will be a DLC for, for the Mothership game. And we have actually started putting a bus stops into the Euro Truck 2 world over a year ago just to have uh, the, the hooks in the game to, to share the world, to share the map between the two games or between the game and the DLCs. We have started building the, the models, the 3D models of the coaches. Also, over a year ago, we were showing stuff on, on the block in the early stages, and we are still working on several models to, to have for the initial launch of this coach driving concept. So now, finally, we, 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 have, we see the, the light at the end of the tunnel. We actually found programming capacity inside the programming team to pay attention to this project, to, be dedica to have a dedicated person uh, creating the special features for the game that's needed, that are needed for, for properly implementing the coach experience into the game. So I'm not able to promise any dates, but we hope that definitely the next year people will see the first fruits of this effort on actually having to be, being able to play the, the coaches, not just to see every half a year a random screenshot, screenshot or two mm. and never hear from us again. Because <laughs> I mean the gameplay, in gameplay terms, coach is quite different to Euro Truck. I mean, America Truck Simulator, I would imagine, is largely the same as European Truck Simulator as a game in that, you know, your trucks, your trailers, all the rest of it. Um, sure, you could add some extra stuff, but when it comes to coaches, you're not picking up trailers anymore, you're moving people. And so you have to think about, we're always moving people, so what are, you know, what are the jobs that we're doing? Where are we taking them from and to and why? Do, how does that even work? Uh, well, you, you don't pick people really at the cargo terminals. You have different spots in the world where to pick people up or where, where to uh, bring them to. <coughs> to their destination. Uh, the coaches are going to the one job from place A to place B may actually involve several stops along the way. So when you have a coach driving from Prague to London, you may be stopping at a German city and a French city. Some people will get off the bus, some people get, will get on on the bus. And the game will actually switch itself to a different mode where the some of the UI screens will work differently, will display different stuff. You will be in charge of maintaining the satisfaction of the passengers. You shouldn't, you know, do something st stupid with your bus that would upset them or make them get off the bus because they hate what the driver is doing. So uh, we have 
several new screens that will manage the bus experience that will replace different stats, different kind of rewards for different sort of uh, campaign progression if you're driving buses then your bus experience you start from zero experience for buses even if you are experienced trucker because you are your job is different now so it's a game inside a game it's mm -hmm. a it's not a fully fledged you know deep game that's why it's a DLC but it's a, it's a different experience than driving trucks is it, is it basically measuring how well you drive then yeah we are always you shouldn't make like stupid acceleration or deceleration or stuff like that because the game is going to watch the g-forces on the mm -hmm. passengers to make sure they don't bump their heads against the, the windows or something like that then they would become upset <laughs> so, it demands they get off the coach so you should follow the time timetable where you should make the passengers keep them happy uh, and it's but at the same time it's still driving from place to place it's not something creative it's not uh, a city tour bus it's it's a coach bus driving long distance and the, in the sharing the same world with the trucks so do you uh you know, will you be buying your own coach, or do you are you just the driver? This is still a little bit of an open question. We can s easily see that integrated in the forms of quick jobs, where you just take a job offer to take like one-time delivery, one-time job. In this case, for time coach driver job, we may get as far as owning the buses, but uh, this is still being elaborated. Uh, Right. Sounds interesting. I mean, it sounds, you know, the ability to pick up passengers and then take them to various drop off points. Didn't see that one. Will you be able to take them to sort of tourist spots as well, like, you know, nice mountain views or something? There'll be a, a stop point there or something like that. This, this has been and still is under discussion. If we, if we you know, normal uh, tour bus, uh, normal bus, you know, coach companies that are. Uh, like the cheap alternatives to flying somewhere, they wouldn't necessarily do that. They optimize their costs yeah. to just drive between cities. We may opt to do that, but uh, our world is full of vistas where it would be nice to bring players to, mm. to give them a chance to enjoy the world and do something sensible in the context of the gameplay. But it's I, I cannot confirm such a feature yet. Be nice though. I mean, I've been scenic tours as well as you know, just kind of commuting tours almost. Um, okay, so Euro Truck. I mean, it's it's been a while since it was released. It's going strong. It's still healthy. You're still releasing DLC for it. Do you plan to carry on doing that? Well, we have no Euro Truck three in in the works now. We still are committed to Euro Truck two. Uh, we we see it as an after two years since the release, we see it now as an evergreen core project to improve, expand, evolve. So, so yes, we hope that people will stay loyal to the game. They will. New customers are coming, new players are coming. Some of the old guys are sticking around and from time to time buying DLCs. We would like to give people more substantial DLCs than just paint jobs. Paint jobs are, say, sort of an experiment to see how we can improve our development pipeline the infrastructure for both development testing and releases to give people more stuff so we would like to do next uh, more trailers and cargoes to beef up the economy to have more new uh, industries in the game for new kinds of interesting cargoes uh, to improve the uh, tuning opportunities for the vehicles both, both outside and inside. So there's a lot of growth opportunities, a lot of new fun things to do that we can eventually implement in the game. So we're not sitting on the on our like laurels just hoping that mm -hmm. people will buy the same game forever. We look at it as a service that can get improved over time. In terms of European truck then and world of trucks and American truck how 
are those dots going to join? Are those worlds going to collide at some point? Is it going to be possible? That's that's the vision eventually. Maybe not at the at the release uh, time of American Truck, but the vision is that people who own both games can eventually, in the context of World of Trucks, be the same persistent player profile or certain same avatar, or how to put it, who can jump from continent to continent to do things that are at that one at that day or the other day interested in for the person. So all of that should eventually get connected and get like the same reason to exist. Mm -hmm. uh, World of Trucks is an umbrella uh, above both the single player games that should bring in community features and eventually VTC and multiplayer support. Uh, but it's an extra layer that's using a uh, different technology than just the, just the client of the game is one piece of the overall puzzle. Mm. You mentioned um, when we were talking over there, you mentioned about skyboxes and owning trailers and all that kind of thing. What, what was the thinking around that? Are these kind of future improvements to Eurotruck, is this part of the evolution? Of oh, yeah, well, one one thing is that we are improving uh, the lightning and shading system, so it's it's both like programming technology stuff, but it's also uh, art tweaks and replacement of older assets with newer assets. So one thing that we are finalizing is better lightning system, where we would have richer uh, graphics. It's part of it is the skyboxes or the clouds and the skies, but it's it's uh, very much about the the lightning and shading of the world to make uh, the environment more believable. Light is very important part of the perception. It's not just about the the models, the three D stuff or the textures, the images painted on the models. The lightning and shading is core part of how you experience the world so and we we know that there are some currently some mm, limitations that are making our world maybe less colorful or more gray or or um, boring than we could make it so we hope that by the time Scandinavia is is about to be released we will we'll be able to to update the whole uh, engine the technology and the whole Eurotruck 2 experience with a better lighting system there's more, there's a, a work, a w there's a lot of work going on now on improving the vegetation system rendering. We have a lot of trees in Scandinavia, a huge forest, huge amount of greenery. And we have to uh, make a smarter system for maintaining all this foliage and in, in keeping it under control. So the technology group is working on this is just one of several projects. We have an, a new sound system uh, being worked on that will uh, allow for richer combinations of, mm. of the sounds coming from the truck. So eventually we hope to have, like, if you drive through a tunnel, you should hear that you're in a tunnel. If you drive through a, a, an empty, barren uh, desert or, or versus you're driving under the cover of the trees, it should sound different and it's not just about we cannot record it we have to take the sound through some smart filters to create the impression that you are in these various environments but that wasn't a part of our original sound solution so we, we are coming up with a new uh, technology a new library for sound that will allow all these combinations people are always asking why can't we open the windows of the truck so that we we can experience this change but right now, we, the limitation is that there's a different set of sounds playing inside the vehicle and playing outside the vehicle. If we, what we do now is if you change between the cameras, uh, we switch to a different set of sounds. Now, tens of megabytes of files get dropped and another set of files is loaded into the memory and starts playing from some point in, in the sound loops. And we cannot synchronize the two so so well and well enough to give people the impression that you just started opening the window next to you. Yeah. Once we start uh, with the new 
smart filtering stuff. Finally, we can do that very quickly and very easily that, that we just alter the way the sound is post-processed post -processed, post -processed through the system. And then opening the window will be a no-brainer. We'll be happy to do that. But right now, so because we don't want people to get this jarring experience where they would hear that things are fake, uh, we avoid things that are uh, stupid and want to do things the right way. And we have to wait for this to happen. That makes sense completely. Um, I've, I've mentioned, I mean, I've talked about this in videos before about the whole kind of modding scene. And I'm of the opinion that one of the reasons why your truck is popular and remains so popular is because of the ability to mod the game. Um, but I kind of feel that one of the things that's missing is the ability to script things into the game. So you can obviously change models and textures and all the rest of it, but there's no kind of programmatic um, scripting language so that mod authors can you know, change either things on the UI, different displays, or just make the game mechanics work slightly differently. Do you think you would ever bring that kind of ability into the game? Um, well, certainly not in the short term. I mean, not in the next year or two, because <laughs> essentially all the gameplay is programmed in C++. We don't have any scripting language inside the game through which we would ourselves create the gameplay. We don't have anything like Unreal Script or whatever scripting languages people are using. Python or Lua, or whatever other languages are used by by uh, game projects these days. So uh, we can only give to the community what we ourselves are using. We are not mm. going to add an extra layer of complexity uh, without having a reason for it to exist for our own purposes. So until and unless something like that happens, uh, we are stuck with whatever is programmed the hard way in, mm. in C++. There are very creative people in the modding community who sometimes bent even the binary stuff that we release, like the multiplayer mod guys are really adding their own functions into the function set that we have. But uh, scripting is is something that we, we have a, like, like simplified scripting that people can change some some numbers in the configuration files or some numbers in the in the files that are set up, setting up physics parameters or cargo weights or, or whatever, but this is just tweaking the, the constants. It's not really about creating new complex behaviors or mm. setting up new scenarios. If, if we had that, it would be great. We would use it, mm. but uh, and one day maybe our ambition to do interesting stuff in the game will make this need for us to be more creative and flexible ourselves for, for implementing some sort of scripting, but until that moment comes, it's, it's, you cannot expect it from us. Fair enough. I know you're not short of ideas, but one of the things that um, certainly a lot, of, a lot of people who play the game, myself included, do find a little bit frustrating is the mod selection screen. And I think part of the reason for that is because it's only a narrow strip down one side. So if you've got a reasonably long mod file name, it, is, it just goes off the screen. There's no ability to search, to filter, to, to choose things. Uh, I've heard people ask for the ability to you know, be able to reorder things because mm -hmm. the only way to reorder them is to change the load order by changing the file name. Uh, that, that's do. why the names of the mods are AAA or exactly. Z, 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 to change Z. the load order. So I, for me, this is actually uh, I'm realizing something for the first time now. That right. Maybe being able to set up the order of the mods yeah. would make it. Would be of course, mods mm -hmm. that come later in the load process replace the mods that exactly. were loaded up earlier in the in the. In the, in the and and often, if you're using mods from multiple authors they'll actually crash if you don't get the order right. They just won't work. Mm -hmm. Or you'll start to see uh, a truck that's just bright red because the textures are broken on it. Mm -hmm. um, you have to get the load order right. And to do that is a bit of a pain. So what I would like to see, if there's any time in the mm -hmm. pipeline anywhere, mm -hmm. is that, mods, that mod selection screen widened. 
the ability to just search, just pull it, just type in, and it just filters the results so that you can quickly find something, and then just change the load order without having to change the farming. Just those simple things would mean a lot to everybody that plays the game because pretty much everybody that plays the game is using a mod of some kind. Um, and if they watch my videos, they're probably using a few mods. Mm. So the ability to just be able to play with that load order and particularly when you get a new version of a mod come out, I just think it would benefit a lot of people. So so this is something that definitely goes on the on the wish list. Here. Yeah. And from the wish list, it may find its way on the task list. Yeah, yeah. But I can wish. Yeah, I, you know, it's important to, to get this kind of feedback from the community. And I, you are the voice of the community today. So yeah, we'll definitely look into it. Awesome. I know, I know there's no shortage of ideas. Um, another thing is, and, and we've talked about this before, is, is you know, the simulators are, I think, they're growing in popularity personally, but, you know, they span a large spectrum of from arcade all the way up to very complicated, you know, perhaps flight simulators, that kind of thing. Now, I think Euro Truck strikes a really good balance. I think it is easily accessible to people who just want to jump in a truck and just experience driving a truck. Um, equally, you can turn on some difficulty settings and, you know, you're forced to sleep and all that kind of thing. But I would like to see that idea expanded so that if you want to, you can make the game a bit more simulator-like. For example, um, you might have random en engine failures or tire blowouts, um, that kind of thing. Or even delivery points, which are very kind of static at the moment. You could have some delivery points are actually more difficult than others and you would get more XP, more money. If you chose that job, it would have some kind of difficulty rating on it because to park the trailer is actually quite, you know, you've got to maneuver it around some cars, down an alleyway, you know, that kind of thing would make the game much more fun and challenging, but keep it accessible. Do you think... Actually, this is you can go on that already direction? happening. <laughs> it's uh, at okay. least a little part of what you just said. For American Truck Simulator, the delivery points, the depots that where you bring the cargo and, and uh, pick up the cargo, they are more complex and there is multiple points in them where to, to deliver the, the trailer and we have a difficulty rating for these spots so in the game you can just come up to the delivery point like you, yeah, like you do now in Eurotruck and say okay I give up a bit of XP and let, let the game sort of virtually deliver it mm -hmm. for me or you can say okay I will bring it to the easiest spot get some XP bonus but not much of it or you can really make it hard for yourself to pick up the difficult driving difficult parking, navigational maneuvering a choice and then spend a little while with manipulating the, the trailer but be rewarded big with some extra experience. So we know that the current uh, cargo terminals are boring, they are all, always the same, always the same spot to drive to. So the American truck guys, they felt passionate about improving upon that, so in their game there will be way more variety on what the game is asking you to or allowing you to to experience for the deliveries. And the discussion already is that we should bring over this feature back into your truck two as well, so that improvements will be coming to the cargo terminals in your truck two as well. So this is one little thing that we think about. Well, there then there is this other uh, problem or or set of questions that we always work with is that once you start uh, spreading your your uh, feature set between arcade-ish and deep core simulation features you essentially have to balance not one game but you have multiple games or even a like, wild combination of, of difficulty settings, how to, how to put it mm -hmm. and you have to balance the game to be, let's say the economic part of the game to be playable for all these different setups so <clears throat> once you make it statistically more complicated to deliver cargos maybe even somebody playing the game with the best of his of his talents he will bankrupt himself in a few hours of playing and the game needs to reward you properly with either money or experience to make up for the higher difficulty so 
at least during the initial period after the release of the game or before the release of the game, we tried to stay away from switching this off and on. Just some really innocent little things like do you want to sleep or not maybe, but once you start turning on and off important elements, important difficulty settings, you have multiple games to balance, you have multiple games to tune. So we try to stay away from it. Well, it's it's creeping and seeping in any way. It's you start with the multiple uh, setups for for gear switching. You have multiple, you know, in the physics, you end up with simulating this or dampening that. So I I don't think we can resist forever making the game options more varied. But we we still try to make the game playable for younger kids, even though we know that a lot of older guys, especially the people with real life trucking experience, would way would want way way more in the simulation from us. Eventually, the features will find their way. It's, it's we would be we'd be crazy not to listen to the to the feedback to the demands mm -hmm. from the community. We just need to take this this step by step. From the most important stuff to the to the smaller stuff, people still fail to realize that when they compare our game to Grand Theft Auto, that this is still a small team. This is still a small project. We don't have ten people just working on the UI of the game like in the big projects. We have ten programmers total in the whole of the company, and one of them needs to work on World of Trucks, another one on tools, another one on rendering stuff and we are running out of people quickly and only, the only way to grow the company is to find a way to sell more copies of the game or to sell more DLCs <laughs> so it's it's a, this vicious cycle where we want to you know build more and we, we have to find a way to do so but to do so we have to be bigger to be bigger we have to be smarter in how, about how we grow mm -hmm. so we have a wish list, uh, several wish lists on different places around the company here on a whiteboard or in, in an internal <laughs> wiki, wiki system or on, on our forums, internal forums, where people are always uh, listing new stuff coming from internal uh, brainstorming or from, from the community feedback. But uh, to go through to the bottom, to get to the bottom of these wish lists will take year, years yeah. for sure. I think, I mean, often you can look at other games and see how did they solve that particular problem. And, you know, the idea of, of upping the difficulty, I've seen in games like Forza, driving games, where you, if you, if you turn off braking assist or you turn off traction control or you turn off, you know, the driver guide that it shows you, it tends to um, just add bonuses. It tends to give you... You know, you get another five percent XP if you do this, or you get another twenty percent XP if you do that, and that stops it ruining the gameplay. It just says that if you're more skilled as an individual, as a player, then we can reward you more. It's the same with the, you know, delivering to more difficult places. Well, uh, our trouble is that we have like multiple say, currencies. One of them is money, the other is XP, and we have to work with the money part of the equation too, not just the XP part of the yeah. equation, so that people feel progression through their career, at the same time people accumulate enough resources to buy new trucks or to build up a fleet of vehicles. Mm. And uh, we, I know that you know, the big successful games have managed to make find the right balances between difficulty settings. Uh, we are, from time to time, Bringing up the discussion about how we can how we can expand the options for the player and how we can compensate some difficulties and things. Uh, we will be looking into it over time for sure. It's not like we are frozen, but this, the game has been changing over the years and will be changing over the years. Uh, I just cannot make any particular promises for what's coming next. No, I think it's pretty too. Um, trailers. Uh, I think I've seen. Was it a blog post that mentioned? The idea of trailers, which you then have, you know, you have you own a trailer, and then you can detach the box off the back of it, and then you'll have another tandem trailer off the back of that, and you can detach that. Is that is that in progress? That kind of piece of work, or our our physics department, our two pro physics programmers, 
have been working on, on this for some time. Well, between this and that, there's multiple things that they need to worry about. But this is something that we absolutely want to do. We have hinted about such support for years on the block. We have to uh, still nail down the details on how to integrate it with our gameplay because the car gameplay of Eurotruck, it's it's a bit of artificial construct. It's not real that a truck driver would always detach the trailer and drive off into the sunset just to find a different trailer to, to attach to. People have people own the trailers and they specialize in this or that type of cargo typically. We wanted to get from the start, we wanted to get the options, the, the choices for the player richer. That's why the concept was that the cargo is uh, like a throwaway concept that you pick a cargo and one day it's a tanker, the other day it's a it's a low boy and the next day you're driving with whatever weird cargo we can come up with. Uh, with with the rigids and with the multiple uh, trailers set up and with the ownership of this, we are entering, we will be entering a very new era and maybe it will implement it inside a single player crime game. Maybe it will only be possible eventually to do this through the World of Trucks system where we plan to have a different economy, different rule set for the gameplay. Uh, we are still trying to figure that out. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, one sort of final question, I guess, is the end game, right? Because you've got, you know, when you start playing Euro Truck Simulator, um, the progression in terms of money and XP, it's kind of, it's quite slow at first. And then as you start, start to hire other drivers and then they start to get skilled, they start to bring money in and it kind of looks like an exponential curve very, very quickly. And it seems to happen somewhere around level, well for me it happened around level 15, 18, somewhere around that mark. Very quickly the money just starts to roll in. Mm -hmm. uh, before that it's quite a struggle, but then all of a sudden money gets ridiculous and now by level 30 I've got 90 million euros. Now anybody in the trucking world would say to you, you don't make that kind of profit, yeah. it, it just yeah. doesn't happen. So it feels like the, the start and middle game is quite decent, but somewhere between mid game and end game, level 20 upwards, it seems to unfold itself somewhere along the line, and you kind of lose the aspect of a challenge, you lose the kind of reason to carry on playing, because you, I know you've brought achievements in the game, and that helps, um, but people want to feel challenged, I think. I think that's kind of a point with Simulator. With American Truck Simulator, I know you've got a guy dedicated to gameplay, and American Truck Simulator is probably largely going to be like Euro Truck Simulator, but in both worlds, there there's a, seems to be a problem with the end game, and I'm just wondering, have you guys recognised this? Yeah, we, we and, know it. It's and have you any thoughts about how to tackle it? <laughs> it's... <laughs> as many things, we, we inside, we always hope that one day World of Trucks will be the savior because it will bend the rules and change the rules. When we when we designed Euro Truck 2 we were honestly we were struggling with how to balance things out because we wanted to give the players we want to find a way for the new player to spend an hour or two playing the game and or already be able to afford a new truck. Which is totally unrealistic accelerated real world where you have a hard time just surviving not to speak about earning enough profit for buying a truck but we had have to we had to set the formulas the constants in the in the system in the economy to give the player a chance and once you do that uh, when you have your first driver or your second driver and you want to follow in principle similar similar economic balance for those other drivers uh, it's very difficult to keep to keep things from going exponential we try to dampen it through the XP things so that when you don't have enough experience you cannot do some stuff in the game yet so some tuning options were hidden behind XP barriers but I, I will be first to admit that the mid to end game 
is it's flying literally into into the expansional exponential uh, levels. Uh, that's why we put other things into the game, like being able to explore the world, and just the exploration itself can be a goal for you. Mm -hmm. The tuning part of the game was also thought as keeping people interested for enough time. But we knew that beyond 30, 40 hours spent in the game, you will have seen everything and you will be everywhere and, and, and done everything. So we knew that people who last that long will be mostly caring about the driving experience. They are there for the mods, for just having a good time driving from place to place. We have lots of people who just don't care about all the economy or the cargoes, who just want to like get, switch off their mind and just drive mm -hmm. an hour in the, in the evening to, to clear their head. So anybody who lasts 50 plus hours in the game is probably in love with trucks and finding his own reasons to be there in this virtual world. But yeah, I have to admit that it's it's a bit of a problem for people who would want to be challenged even at 200 hours, 300 hours into the game. We will be doing some tweaks, we will be replacing our dri our AI drivers and our, uh, and our uh, driver set. The images will be thrown away, we will have new faces in the game, we will have larger number of drivers in the game. And the problem will only get worse because right now the limit is a little, bit, little over 150 drivers. Once we have 200, 300 drivers in the game, the economy will generate even more profit every day, every time you sleep, every time you just take a ferry. Meanwhile, the economy makes another step and you get lots of money just poured at you. So in Eurotruck 2 game, the dice has been cast, it's already sort of working that way. We may tweak it a little bit, we may not alter it altogether. The hope is that once World of Trucks gameplay is is added next to the standard gameplay, it will be more challenging, uh, more complex, it will require interaction between players. So uh, building a fleet will be very very hard for just one guy. They will have to join into a company, work together, and we can postpone the end game for a lot of time until until people people should have fun uh, through through the growth period of their company, not just through the initial initial ramp up and then having everything happening automatically. We we know that we will try to do that, but most likely in the context of World of Trucks. Fantastic. That sounds an absolute grand vision, that does. Um, I have no more questions. Thank you very much for inviting me here. Thank you very much You're for welcome. your time. <laughs> You're welcome.